Welcome back to the fifth anniversary edition of Championship Boxing here from the Hershey Center in Mississauga. It's time to go to the ring for our first bout. Here's our ring announcer, Thomas Triver. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the ring, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, Alex Whipdam Ebanks. And now let's welcome to the ring his opponent fighting tonight out of the red corner, Jeff, the Trouble One, Tabrizi. You make your debut, doesn't exactly go as planned, unfortunately, for Jeff as he lost by TKO. But it's been almost an entire year, Tibor. Don't you kind of want to get back into it? Obviously, with injuries being the exception. Well, you know, he maybe he had to make a decision. Uh, he had took some time and think about it. Um, not sure how that fight went. Maybe he got really hurt. I don't know. But uh, either way, he's brave to get back in there and, and, and give it another shot. You, can't you cannot define your whole career on your first fight. No. There's so many people in this world that have failed and have come back to succeed tremendously. Well, I think the, the best example has got to be our main event, Tim Cronin. He lost his first fight, and now he's won seven straight. Hey, so. I can say I lost my first fight. There you go. Yeah. I, I mean, did I, did I really think I lost it? Maybe not, but... <laughs> <laughs> There's Jeffrey Tabrizi, 0-1. Fighting out of the U.S. of A. I just said, Michelle, his first fight was out of California. So you got to believe that uh, not fighting in his own backyard has really not is not going to affect him all that much. No, I don't think so. I think I'm thinking more of a redemption fight for him. Absolutely. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Championship Boxing here at the Hershey Center in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. We get the action started with four rounds scheduled in the Super Welterweight Division, and it is being brought to you by United Boxing Promotions along with their great sponsors, Cambridge Hyundai, Dixie Hyundai, Choice Hotels, Phillips Moving, Corona, and the Tilted Kilt Mississauga. Our three judges scoring on a 10-point must system will be Marvin Sazant, Harry Davis, and John Wiley. Our referee in charge,
The third man in the ring will be Rocky Zolnirchak. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, he's wearing black with gray and weighed in at 154 pounds. Hailing from Toronto, Ontario, tonight he is making his professional boxing debut. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alex Whipdam Ebanks. His opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing red, trimmed in white, and weighed in at 150 and a half pounds. Coming to us from Burlington, Ontario, he has a professional record of no wins with one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Jeff, the Trouble One, Tabrizi. Okay, guys, I've went over the instructions in the change rooms. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves, come out banging. Rocky Zahir, Chuck, the third man in the ring for this one. And Rocky's been around for a long time. And it's nice to see a veteran referee with two guys that are so early on in their career. Oh, yeah, I like Rocky. He does a good job in there. I've had the pleasure of having him ref a bunch of my fights also. Good guy. Got to clear up a little uh, uh, miscommunication. Yes, Tabrizi fought out of California, came out of the U.S. of A, but is settled now in Burlington, Ontario. Tabrizi with a quick left hand. Ebanks standing straight up. Quick right from Tabrizi. Ebanks missing on all three of those punches. Great job by Tabrizi to stay out of the way. Ebanks gets a couple of shots in. Tabrizi gets his own overhand right in. Backs away from a couple of jabs from Ebanks. It's got to be tough, Tibor, for these guys to, you know, no video really of each other, no real knowledge of each other's fighting styles. Yeah, it's their first fight, second fight. Uh, you know, they, they, they've kind of just got to bring everything they've got to the table and and make it all work within the four rounds, yeah, you know pick, what I mean? Pick your style, Michelle, pick your strengths, and go with those, you gotta be go confident in your own that's abilities. That's right, that's right. That's right, you can't worry about what your opponent's gonna do, you gotta just, it's all about you in there, and we talked about the mental aspect of the sport. And if you worry about you, and you do you, or you perform to your capabilities, most of the time you end up on the winning end of a yeah. decision. It helps you keep focused, you know, when you're thinking of, if you're standing in front of a guy and you're looking at what he's doing all the time, you're not thinking about what you, sh what you should be doing, it can, can, you know, you can fall behind very quickly. The biggest thing is these guys have got a game plan and they've got to stick to their game plan and know that it's the right way That's to right. go for them. That's right, you have to execute it. Good overhand right from Ebanks, tries it again, missed just shy of the left temple of Tabrizi. Jeff Tabrizi wearing the red trunks trimmed in white. Good right hand of the body. Alex Ebanks in the charcoal trunks. Ebanks looks like he's kind of starting to get his range now. Good exchange along the ropes right in front of us. Nice job by Ebanks to bounce out of the way of that right hand. Ebanks tying up to Breezy. Rocky Zahir Chuck steps in to separate the fighters. Ebanks, very upright fighter. Yeah, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little, uh, a little worried. These guys, his chin is up a little bit, his shoulders are a little bit low. I'd like him to see a little bit more of a shoulder shrug kind of protecting those pockets around the chin like that like those looping shots right there those are the ones that are going to sneak in those pockets there underneath the chin and you got to think too as the smaller fighter 
you know, you could hear it from the crowd. The overhand right is always something that a taller fighter has to look out for and defend against because really that's one way of, I guess, getting inside and making up for that range that you're losing on a, on a longer fighter. And that's the challenge that Ebanks is going to face. Being taller, a lot of his punches are missing the mark by about a half inch over the top of the head. How difficult is it for a fighter to go from the amateur ranks into the pro ranks because it's a different scoring system, it's a different objective in the way that you have going into the ring. It's not really a point system that it is in the amateurs. When you get into the pros, you can still win rounds without getting points. Yeah, absolutely, and it's, and it's really difficult to say how it really actually is because you got three different judges around, right. and uh, both of them have their own minds. Both ju all three judge in different ways. Round number two of this scheduled four rounder. Ebanks touched him with the left. Good little Breezy body backs shot. away. It was. But Ebanks, being the taller fighter and fighting in an upright style, he's having to punch straight down most of the time. Yeah, Tabrizi's kind of he kind of he's kind of bending over as he's avoiding shots. And he tends to look the, he, tends, he tends to stay there and he might be open. Two good right hands from Tabrizi. Ebanks clutches him up, gathers his senses, and steps back in the center of the ring. Pause at the jab, takes a right to the chin. Ebanks. Showing he can take one to the chin in the second round. But Tabrizi looking a little more confident in the ring. Using a lot of good fakes, head movement. Defense is so key with head movement when you're the smaller fighter because you need to bob your we bob and weave into, you know, the pocket, right? And, oh, yeah. And in order to get the shots off that you want, and then retreat and get out of danger again, you have to have, as mentioned, you know, good footwork and uh, very good head movement, which uh, Tabrizi is definitely showing. We talked about Tabrizi starting his pro career out of the state of California, but has settled in Burlington, Ontario, fighting here now in the Hershey Center in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Ebanks pins him against the ropes. To Breezy. Slipping most of those sort of looping punches coming from Ebanks. Ebanks a little tentative getting inside. He's still landing some good body shots, though. Tibur, I, I almost feel as though if Ebanks threw a little bit more down the middle, he'd have more success. Just throw straight punches instead of the looping punches that he would be able to keep Tabrizi at bay and while a, scoring as well. And we just saw that right there. He went straight after him with a, with a jab and a straight right, and both connected. Yeah, both guys, both guys are making uh, what they do good work right, right. now, you know? Ebanks has to be a little more authoritative with that jab. He's got to he's got to have some purpose behind that punch. Make it a little more snappy. <laughs> Second round in the books. Second pro round for Alex Ebanks. Jeff Tabrizi with another good round here at the Hershey Center. There you see Tabrizi's corner. So Tabrizi lets go a few here. There's a big overhand right. And you, like you said, Michelle, you've got to connect on the bigger, uh, taller fighter with that kind of punch. And that head movement just made, you know, Ebanks miss two times in that one small replay, right? Well, Tibor, I know in terms of experience, Having one fight versus doing, having your pro debut may not seem like a very big difference, but it's still, you know, mentally and feeling comfortable in the ring is a very big difference in my eyes, and especially seeing how Ebanks is adjusting and how quickly, you know, Tabrizi has a little bit of swagger and confidence in there. Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure they've spent numerous hours in the gym and, and uh, trying to get accustomed 
to you know within those four ropes, but uh, I think they're looking pretty good too in this big crowd here. Right hook coming from Tabrizi. That found the mark, glancing off the shoulder and into the side of the head of Evans. Tabrizi very good coming off the attack of uh, Evans. Looking for those counter shots, yeah. Third round of four here from the Hershey Center. This is fight number one, Alex Ebanks wearing the charcoal trunks. And Jeff Tabrizi in the red trimmed in white. One of the other things I think the fans will see when these guys get a little more into their career, there's a good right coming from Ebanks. Now connects with the left. Tabrizi backing up. Ebanks over the top. Ebanks again, has him backed up. Tabrizi missing on that wild one was Ebanks, but he comes back with a good jab, goes back to the body, takes one from Tabrizi. Tabrizi along the ropes, moves it back to the middle of the ring. Ebanks over the top, connects, tries to pot him this time. He's got Tabrizi with the hands down, undercut, over the top. Trouble. He's got to keep those hands up. See the confidence in Alex Ebanks just blossoming here in the third round. A couple of solid punches, Michelle, and all of a sudden he feels like he's indestructible. Absolutely. And Tabrizi's just trying to basically catch his breath at this point and basically get back into the center of the ring as well. He looks very wobbly right now. Good body punches coming from Ebanks, hits on the left, and a wild right just missing from Tabrizi. You know, Tibor, you mentioned it right off the top, that in a short fight like this, especially in the early going of your career, you gotta let it all hang out, because you only have four rounds that's to right, show. That's right, it's not a lot of time. You, you, you lose two rounds, you lost half the fight. Yep. Ebanks with a slip. Now you can tell that a couple of those shots definitely affected Tabrizi because he's not throwing as much as many combinations rather as he was before. It's more so, you know, one or two big looping punches, and that's pretty much it. He's gassing quicker as well. And yeah, those right hands that he banks hit him with, like right there, even that one right there. He, he, if you look at if you look at Tabrizi, like I was saying, how he bends over like that, he's kind of waiting down there too long. He leaves his side of his head open there, and I think he's getting hit in the temple behind the ear, which are dangerous, dangerous spots. Absolutely. That that kind of a punch right to the behind the ear in that temple yes. spot, that's it, somewhere where your guy can really go down quickly. Yeah, you gotta hold, you know, you gotta you gotta make sure you keep moving that head, try not to stay in the same spot too long. And of course, have those hands where you know you, you know you gotta know where they are. So here comes Alex Ebanks. There's the right, and he just misses on the jazz, but connects on the next right hand. Yeah, you notice Tabrizi's kind of moving straight back. He's not, he's not, you know, he's not taking the side angle as trying to get away. He's moving straight back. That's what makes it easier for the taller guy when you move straight back. Yep. Best and round so far for Alex Ebanks. Absolutely. And it goes back to that earlier point that if someone's moving straight back and you're the taller, lankier fighter. All you're doing is just swinging down the middle. You know what I'm saying? Throwing down the middle because that's exactly where your opponent's going to be. You don't need to take any other angles. You're staying in that window, that that's target. It. Ooh. Good right hand coming from Tabrizi, but Ebanks comes straight back out. Ooh. Tabrizi knocks him almost to the canvas, and they're going to get a standing eight count. Yeah, again, he snuck that right hand in. Tabrizi's kind of turning away and, he, and he's letting that shot hit. I wish he would I wish he would face the shot more and keep his hands up, his arms up, his shields up and try and deflect the shot. I think he would he'd be able to see it more. Ebanks's corner during this uh, timeout was saying, pick your shots. Don't decide to be wild now. Ebanks doing a great job just holding that left hand straight out, just keeping him at bay. Yes. And that's the perfect example of your jab not just being used as, a, say, a distraction or, or, you know, or just setting up other punches. It can just distract. Big 
right hand coming from Ebanks. He misses with the wild hook. Ebanks has got Tabrizi pinned along the ropes. Tabrizi throws one back over top. Ebanks knows he's just trying to set up that thunder of a right hand. One thirty-five left here in the final round. This is a four-round fight. And once again, Alex Ebanks is taking control of this fight. We'll see if Jeff Tabrizi can hang on. Tabrizi's got a small cut on his left cheek. There's a quick right. Tabrizi backed into the ropes again. Ebanks misses a wild right over top. Let him go, both fighters. Both fighters come together and roll into the corner. A buck five left here in the final round of fourth. Pro debut for Alex Ebanks. This is fight number two of the professional career of Jeff Tabrizi. Ebanks, two right hands connect. Nice counter shots from Ebanks. And Tibor, you're mentioning you know, him getting hit at the side of the ear, but that's also because when you turn your head as a boxer, yeah, he's kind of he kind of leans over like that. He's got that bad habit, and he, he, his arms are down low at the same time. It just makes it for an easy target. Yep. And it sounds rudimentary, but the shots you don't see are the ones that knock you out. Yeah. Easy target for the taller man. Ebanks will find out later on in his career, though, that just trying to load up that right hand, guys are going to defend against that fairly simply. Yeah, he's getting a little anxious. He knows Tabrizi's in trouble, and he's kind of got him. Uh, He's hitting him with big shots. Final He's trying to get him out there. Seconds of the round. They're going to clutch it for the final five now. Rocky Zahirchuk steps in, and that does it for round number four. A great round again for Alex Ebanks. Well, gentlemen, I had that as a 10-8 round. It's a good fight. For Ebanks, and here's a good look why. I've got my scorecards shows 38-37 for Ebanks. That right hand happened Yo. exactly where you said it would happen. Dominated. Another one. Yeah, you can't get into that, uh, as you called it, that window, into that frame, and, and not be able to get find your way out. Because if you do against a bigger fighter, you're, yeah, you're you, in deep. You, you got to get in and out of it. You can't stay there too long. Good uh, good win for Ebanks and his team. Uh, my apologize, good team out there. He's got uh, Egerton McEwen there in his corner. Good guy, I like him a lot. Two things I'd like to see from Ebanks in the future, and hopefully we get to see him here at United Promotions a little bit more, is, you know, more work off that jab. So follow up the jab with more than just the right hand, like you said, Doug, and just keep pressing the action. And that, that comes with maturity, Absolutely. that comes with yeah. experience. I noticed a little bit, he got a little bit anxious, he was trying to take him out, and he kind of was getting a little too close to him and smothered himself, but uh, none, nonetheless, he. He, he made it. He made it work for tonight. You know, if you start maybe adding a couple, you know, fakes with that left hand too. You yeah. pump out that jab, then have a fake and come around the corner with a hook or something. You could be devastating. Let's go to the ring. Here's Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Marvin Cezanne scores it. 38 to 35. Judge Harry Davis scores it 40 to 35. And Judge John Wiley scores it 39 to 36. All to your winner by unanimous decision. And successful here tonight in his professional boxing debut, Alex Wimtam Ebay. How about a big round of applause for Jeff Tobrizi?
guys. A little bit of the weigh-in footage from this morning for their next two fighters coming up. Looking forward to our second fight of the evening. Here's Thomas Driver. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ring. Fighting tonight out of the blue corner, Oscar Verdugo Barajas. Arrival to the ring of Oscar Barajas from Mexico. A pretty impressive record for the guy they call the executioner. 11 wins, five of them via KO. Both his losses also by knockout as well. He's coming off of a TKO loss in December in Montreal. So, Tibor, what about that? You know, literally just two months ago, you get knocked out for just, you know, the second loss of your career, and you're right back at it right away. Is that something you would rather do? Obviously, if you're not injured, you'd rather get back at it right away, or do you need, you know, an extra month or two to kind of, you know, make sure that you're prepared mentally to get back in there? Yeah, yeah um, tough. Tough question for me. I, you know, I've never been knocked out. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to jinx it. But I like to think uh, I like to think I would want to get back in there right away and just you know, I mean, as long as you didn't get too totally hurt uh, prior to that. I guess what Michelle's asking, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Michelle, but what Michelle's asking is, would you rather be an active fighter who fights many times in a year? And I don't mean every month, but you know, maybe a half dozen times or four times in a year, rather than a guy that's twice a year. Oh no, you definitely want to be busy in this sport. Uh, it's, you know, once in a while, it's just, it's not good enough. You know, you got it. You want to be very, very active. Every other month, every couple of months is, is good, it's good. Well, and that's the perfect segue because Oscar has had six fights in 2015. Six fights. Wow. So literally, he yeah, went April, 
twice in May, once in June, once in October, once in December. So that's a lot of fights in a very short period of time. From April on, you had six fights in eight months. But you know what? The only thing I think most fighters would say is if I'm not hurt, and I'm not hurt badly from a fight, and I don't mean just a broken bone or a finger or anything bad, I'm talking about bad cuts, I'm talking about, you know, uh, some, taking some heavy hits. If you're not in that in that position right there, it's very hard to take time off. Let's go back to the ring. And now let's welcome to the ring his opponent fighting tonight out of the red corner, Mohamed Farouz Ebedi. So it's Mohammed Aberdeen coming into the ring. I know him as Mo. Mo, yes. I've never called him Mohammed ever. I've known him for a very long time, so I'm gonna just state the bias hey, if you right know him now. As Mo, you call him Mo. Just state the bias right out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect you would know too much about the Mexican fighter. No, no, especially it being his first uh, fight out of Mexico. So that's another uh, that's another adjustment he's got to make, right? Yeah. Oscar, it's, it's, First fight out of Mexico, first fight against a fighter other than a Mexican fighter. So he's fighting someone from Canada, he's fighting in a different country. A lot to adjust Definitely. to. Wow. Definitely. Hey, it looked like he was in good shape at the weigh-in, so... Uh, yeah, it sure did. Yeah. The one thing we've always seen from Mexican fighters, in particular uh, Latino fighters, is that they leave it all in the ring. They are never disappointing in their style. Yeah, very courageous fighters. 3-0 and 1. Abedin comes into the ring. He's from Brampton, Ontario, just up the road here from the Hershey Center. Well, a true hometown fight for him. Yeah, and he's all around the GTA as well. And, you know, he trains stockyards. He also trains, I know, for his... Uh, fitness levels and everything like that. He trains out of Roddick's Performance Center, which is out in Oakville. So, I mean, he's all over the GTA, and this is a, a big fight for him to be here at the Hershey Center, Mississauga, so close to home. And good to have Richard Suse in his uh, corner as well. Richard There's a veteran Suse, guy. Yeah, good guy, I love Richard. Richard. Championship boxing continues with six rounds scheduled in the lightweight division. SAA says Asaltos in Peso Ligero, presented by Presentado Por United Boxing Promotions, along with their sponsors Cambridge Hyundai, Dixie Hyundai, Choice Hotels, Phillips Moving, Corona, and the Tilted Kilt Mississauga. The judges are Los Jueces Son, Alan Davis, Harry Davis. A Raymond Rutter. Our referee in charge is Floyd Porter. <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing silver with black and weighed in at 133 and three quarter pounds. En la esquina azul, vestido de plateado con negro, su peso es 133 libras y tres cuartos. His professional record, 11 wins, two defeats, with five of his 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Su record, 11 victorias, dos derrotas con cinco victorias por la vía del knockout. De Zamora, Michoacan, Mexico, presentando Oscar Verdugo Barajas. His opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing white with gold and weighed in at 134 and a half pounds. En la esquina roja, vestido de blanco con dorado, su peso es 134 libras y media. Undefeated, he has three wins, one draw. One of those three wins comes by way of knockout. Su record, tres victorias, cero derrotas, un empate con una victoria por la vía del knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brampton, Ontario, Canada, here is Mohammed Farouz Aberdeen. The ring is Barajas from Mexico in the black trunks trimmed in white. I expect you to obey those instructions. Ball line's good here. That's a little bit low. Touch gloves. 
Come on, Mr. Bell. Floyd Porter, the third man in the ring for this fight, our second fight in the evening. Haas goes down low to the body. Aberdeen comes right back with a quick left hook. Aberdeen's going to have to catch up with Barajas, and he seems to be playing that moving target very well so far. Barajas is uh, he's stepping to his right. He's a southpaw. He's trying to get that right foot on the outside, looks like, and line up that left hand. Here, Aberdeen's corner saying, hey, Mo, hit to the body. Get to the body. Good uppercut. Training for a southpaw, how hard is it to find a lot of very good southpaws to kind of spar against in order to prepare yourself for something like this? Uh, they're around. Uh, you're right. They're not the, they're not the most common. Southpaws, but uh, they're out there. One of the predominant things going on in boxing right now, too, is seeing guys that can flip from left to right hand. Yeah, guys like, uh, you know, popular guys, Marvin Hagler was famous for it. Absolutely. Aha. Uh -huh. This is on the uppercut, just over top, on the right, straight right. Quick left, missing from Aberdeen. Everdeen, great job with the jab to keep him back. But Ahas connects with the straight right and goes down to the body. There's a big left coming from Barajas. Aberdeen stays on his feet. Barajas connects with the right. A straight left again. To the body he goes. Barajas. He's got Aberdeen hurt. Aberdeen trying to hold on for life right now with 40 seconds left in the first round. Great combination. Looked like he was kind of saving those shots. <laughs> and he picked them really nice, too. Barajas, too, is with uh, a lot more experience as well. Seven more fights than Aberdeen. So, you know, that experience is coming through as well. Aberdeen chasing Barajas around the ring. Barajas throws the left. Pushing Aberdeen back. Aberdeen with the quick right over the top. Ten seconds, Ten seconds left here in the first round. A scheduled four-rounder. First round. round in the books for Aberdeen. But uh -huh. And one thing that, yeah, one thing you're not used to seeing from boxers is them get visually upset. And you saw Aberdeen get visually upset after, you know, he got getting tagged a few times in the, that flurry by Baraha. And we're gonna take a look at it right now, too. It's almost There's as the if- uppercut, yeah. and then the big good hook. Yeah, that was a real good hook, and he connects with a left hook a little bit later on as well that did some damage. Now, you gotta ask you guys, a couple of times I saw Mo looking over to his corner, how much does he actually hear from the corner during the match? Yeah, you can hear lots if you're trying to hear, if you're listening for it, you know. Um, I don't see a point looking. Is it distracting? No. For a no. young fighter like this? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I will say if he's on the opposite corner and pressing, it is harder, harder to hear. See Barajas focused on the shoulders of Aberdeen. No Aberdeen wearing the white trunks trimmed in gold just up the road from Brampton, Ontario. You know, Barajas is a very uh, interesting fighter because he's letting Mo dictate 
you know, rigmanship. And the pace. And the pace, but yet he's landing these yeah. massive shots. He's taking his time, he's taking a good look. It's, um, it's almost like he's strictly counterpunching. He, he's, he's picking his shots, and I like what he's doing, actually. I think he's very uh, in tune of what's going on. He's making a miss. His defense is pretty good. He's letting shots go. He's, he's just being cautious about what shots he, he throws. Mo, Mo's giving him a lot of pressure. He's gonna have to fight his way out of the corner, and he does, throwing that right hook to the body and good then body bouncing shot. back to the middle of the ring. Good left hand to the body there. Looking for the quick uppercut. Almost connected with Aberdeen on that one. There's a nice right to the ribs. Swept him with the right hook there. Aberdeen. He putting on the pressure. I like how he's kind of faking now. He's not just running in there, you know. He's he's throwing some feints. He's giving up some room there. It's almost as if he's starting to kind of see what's coming at him. Yeah, I too think he was better. beating a little bit. Uh, he was pressing a little bit too hard. Aberdeen with a good flurry in the corner. Good body shot, good straight left. Maraja's doing a great job of boxing, looking, taking his time, picking his shots. With that being said, moving backwards all the time and defending also gets tiring. Good uppercut. Absolutely. Aberdeen looks like he's got a little more confidence under his belt here in the second round. Down to the final 10 seconds of the second round. Michelle, you hit the nail on the head when you said Aberdeen is directing the pace. He's keeping the ringmanship to himself. Good round for Muhammad Aberdeen. I also think, too, that he's becoming, uh, maybe Baraha, when he's trying to get out of the corner, he's becoming more predictable. So uh, most starting to see his tendencies. Uh, the side, he's always leaning to his left. And Right, he's not, he's not very busy. He's not right, he's trying to get out of the corner, always leading to the left side. He's, you know, he's coming out with the hook as well. You know, so he's looking out and seeing what's. We heard Richard Suse in the corner talking about the, the uh, Mo needs to come back with more than a one two combination. Round number three of the scheduled four-rounder. Live on Rogers TV around Ontario and around the world on YouTube. Channel 369 if you're fiddling in here in Ontario. So Susie wants an uppercut and then to have him come over the top. So right uppercut, left hook. Right hand over the top. There it is, yeah. Once again, Aberdeen is directing the pace. He's making sure that he's keeping Barajas to the outside. There's an uppercut, just missed. Barajas went over top, and Aberdeen misses with the quick left hook. Suse's also telling him to sit down on his punches and to come with a couple straight 
a job and a straight right hand. Oh, there's a big right coming from Barajas. He's got Aberdeen struggling a little bit, backs up into the corner. Aberdeen's hurt. That hook hurt him. He tried to grab onto him. And this is where Barajas in the second round, or in the first round, took advantage of Aberdeen's inexperience. And you can see him shaking his head like he did in the first round, Michelle. Great fight. Barajas goes back to the body, backs up, just missing on the straight right, but catches him with the left, is Abedin. There's an uppercut. Oh, a right hand coming from Barajas. Oh, shook him. And he did shake him, he hit him again. Barajas stays on his feet, oh, he's takes hurt. the left. He's wobbled at the knees, into the corner they go. Barajas over top with the right, uppercut looking, and every time it seems Abedin goes for that big right hook, he gets connected to the body and then the overhand right. Becoming too emotional in there. He's still looking a little shaky. He's got 15 seconds. Just got to make it to the end of the third round. But Ahas, you think would be in attack mode in the final 10 seconds? Oh, he's 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 still a little he's still a little shaky. Saved by the bell. So the third round is in the books. You know, Barajas is doing a really good job of being patient. And sometimes when you're tracking a guy down and your guy's being so patient, he can surprise you with shots. And uh, I know I know Mo uh, got hit with a couple there that he didn't like. Big left hand. And that right hand to the body, you see that? He would have never seen that if it landed. That would have been, that would have hurt him. But you see, the, it was, that was a flurry of five or six punches in a row that found their mark yeah. dead on. Good combination thrown from uh, Barajas. Like you said, he's picking his shots. So, you know, when he is coming out and attacking, he's landing. And then he's throwing in combination as well. It's not just the one, yeah. two, and. I'll tell you something I back. see too, he's doing is he's throwing mixed. Uh, power shots, you know what I mean? He'll throw very light shots, and then when he wants to wind up and he gets close, he knows he's gonna land that shot, he sits on and he lets it rip. He's not wasting energy, you know what I mean? No, absolutely. It looks like he's he's pushing the gas, but he hasn't put the, put the pedal to the floor yet. Fourth well, round, you better make sure I was gonna say, yeah. yeah. Last round. You could hear his corner say, here's your chance, here's your chance right now. You gotta believe that he's down on the scorecard two rounds to one. But if he wins this fourth round, it could be just a draw. He, need, he needs this round for sure. You can see he is being more patient as well. You know, as the one always pressing the fight, Tibor, how do you stay patient and not let that anxiousness take over? <laughs> Sorry. It's tough. That's tough. Uh, you know, I I like to say, you know, take your time, use feints, see what the guy does. You know, don't just jump in there, and it could be very dangerous. So uh, if you can remember to feint, I think it'll help remind you to take you're taking that extra look. The feints are big. I, I tell young fighters all the time, use your feints, use your feints. Take a look, see what he does. Rajas knows he has to keep more active in this fourth round. As you see, he's not just trying to get away from the punches. He's very good at slipping the punches, but he's got to be able to connect on his own coming out of the corners. He's good at coming over the top of that jab. He's landing that every time. Good body work. But again, only a one-two. And you know Richard Suse saying in the corner, I need to see more combinations of three-four. Barajas, is, he's very elusive. He's got great defense. He connected that, with that left. Yeah, that left hand is dangerous. It's a very sneaky left, isn't it? You notice how you see how he's stepping to his left there? He's kind of lining up that, that left hand. That's what he's looking for. Motion, watch out for the hook coming across too after the left hand. 
There's that hook. Yeah, Ooh. over the and top of the jab every time. Up, yeah. yeah. Well, he's found a hole in the game of Mo Aberdeen. He's going to take advantage of it until Mo Aberdeen shows he can stop it. Final 10 seconds of the fourth and final round. Wow. I don't think that was about how many punches you threw in that round. I think it was about which ones connected the heaviest. That was a tough one to score. That yeah. last round was that a tough one to was score. Very tough. Fighters have been very close, but Ahas with a trickle of, bl of blood coming out his nose, just wiping it away right now. Oh. Referee Floyd Porter in the middle of the ring, making sure these two fighters are well above board. out that left jab. Harmless as it looks, he's got to be able to set up a few other punches with it. Good combination coming from Barajas. Abedin comes right back. Barajas over the top with the right once again. He moves him back into the middle of the ring. Now pushes him over to the ropes. Rahas, content to just roll to the outside. Good combination from Abedin. Good pressure. Left coming from Oscar Barajas. You know, Mo, he's, he's so the, the pressure. I love it. I love it. He, you know, he's fearless. But you're pressing a guy, and, and the guy's throwing. He's, he's pretty good at throwing different combinations. He's got to be, got to have those hands up. especially coming forward. Everything just seems to be coming over on top of his yeah. jab, right? Yeah. His hands are just, uh, just too low. Yeah. And he's got to get that left hand up in order to protect himself. Right. Not only that, when he's on the offensive, that you can see that left hand coming from, be from so low to have to make it to head height. Well, and I think, too, Barajas was starting to see as well that uppercut always coming, right? That rear uppercut as well. There we go. That's mixing it up a bit more. I think the feeling from Aberdeen is that uppercut is to protect him from coming in low and coming up high with, with an over-the-top right. So fifth round in the books. I don't know about you guys, but in the fifth round now, after five rounds hook, got Barajas up three rounds to two. I have the same. I have Barajas win this fight. I agree. 
I mean, it's, it's so tough to gauge as well because, you know, Abdi's obviously, you know, pushing the pace. He's got the rigmanship going, but the bigger, harder shots are being landed by Baraha. Oh, clearly. And, and you know, uh, Aberdeen is clearly that he's hurt many, a few times. That's a tough one to run into. Give Aberdeen all the credit in the world. He's been hit with some big shots, but keeps coming tough. back. get themselves in a bit of a predic predicament because they do have to have their hands up and their guard up higher when they have been hit with a significant amount of shots, but then they become more tentative. Yes. Oh, good right hand. Mo Aberdeen now being the more active fighter. Got to be able to match the hand speed of Oscar Barajas. Nice slip by Barajas. Keeps moving to his left. Aberdeen's got to be careful. He's had that left hand of his on the back of the neck of Barajas a couple of times in this round. Barajas with a glancing blow off the top of the head. Combination backs away, slipping the two jabs and the left hook from Aberdeen. Barajas, couple of body shots, goes back up top. Abedin missing with a wild left over the top. Barajas, both guys looking to go to the body late here in the sixth round. 110 left. Barajas doing a great job of tagging that left every time. And it could yeah. be looping and it could be straight. He's doing both. This final minute will prove to be a big difference for Aberdeen. Can he win this round? Rajas doing a good job of getting away from those punches. They're not even glancing blows, they're just missing over the top. And when he does hit, it's mostly a shoulder. Yeah, great defense. It looks good, but I don't know how much of it's gonna score for Abedi. He's very active in the ring, and that's something that's a, a real positive thing to take away from this. Barajas fades away with a quick hooking right. Just missed on the uppercut. Final 10 seconds of the sixth round. There's a big body blow by Barajas. Catches him with the left hook. Both guys throwing toe to toe as the round comes to a close. What an unbelievable great ending round. to a fight. Wow. Yeah. What a great ending to this fight. Abedin and Barajas putting on a show here at the Hershey Center. That's one thing that you love to see in any sport is the athletes leaving it out there. And that's exactly what these two did. Yeah, great fight. Watch the final action of this as both guys just stand in the center of the ring, throwing major hooks and major, major power. So I got this one sitting at 58-55 in favor of Barajas. Yeah, 58-56. Uh, I got for Barajas also. Yep, yeah, 58 56. Sorry. It's okay, Doug. You're not here for the math. <laughs> That's no. okay. I didn't, it wasn't my best subject in school. <laughs> Me neither. I think it's safe to say we all skipped out on math as soon as it was <laughs> time. <laughs> Uh, 
a thoroughly, thoroughly entertaining fight to Great watch. Fight. Yeah, all six rounds had some sort of drama in each and every round. I think Mo Aberdeen, with a little more experience, is going to have a great future in this uh, fight game. More than willing combatant, is able to put together a couple of punches. If he can start putting together lengthy combinations, that's going to be trouble for a lot of fighters. And he can take a punch, clearly. Yeah. He yeah. can take a punch. Tough. For Oscar, Bar for Oscar Barajas, one of the big things for Oscar Barajas is the fact that he was able to roll off some of those punches from Aberdeen and connect with that overhand right. Michelle, we, we saw it every time Aberdeen would throw that jab, it was over the top and he was connecting with yeah, it. Absolutely, and I mean, why do you fix what ain't broke, right? Yeah. If it, he was landing it almost at will. He could land it either a, a short little hook, either an overhand, a big old overhand, or even a straight punch. He was landing it in, in all forms. He was the tighter guy in when they were when they were close together. He was a little bit tighter, a little bit sharper. He had his eyes on him all the time, and he was uh, landing those shots over the top. Yeah, one of the challenges that we're facing right now is uh, all the referees and all the judges have not put all the scoring cards in yet. You see, uh, in the middle of the ring, we're just watching Thomas Driver tallying up everything, making sure that uh, they've got everything set to go. They'll know in just a minute as to who came out on top, but I think we're all in agreement that it was Barajas by a couple of points, outpointing uh, the young Mo Abadie. Yes. Here we go, set to go to the ring. Here's the ring announcer, Thomas Driver. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards, and we have a split decision. Judge Raymond Rudder scores it 58-57. Aberdeen. El Juez Raymond Rutter anotó 58 a 57. Aberdeen. Judge John Wiley scores it 58-56. Barajas. El juez John Wiley anotó 58 a 56. And Judge Harry Davis scores it 58-56. El juez Harry Davis anotó 58 a 56. For your winner, by split decision, para el ganador por decisión dividida, Mohamed. So obviously the judges choosing activity over connecting of punches as Mo Aberdeen gets his big first win, taking out Oscar Barajas in six rounds, 58-56, a split decision here at the Hershey Center in Mississauga. Coming back with our third fight of the night. Stay with us.
Welcome back live to the Hershey Center, our fifth anniversary edition of Championship Boxing. We had a chance to catch up with Ori Cox and talk about what bullying, what is big in the schools right now and what everybody's trying to stamp out is bullying throughout the schools, whether it's cyber bullying or physical bullying, mental bullying, it's all the same. And Ori Cox had to deal with that, and this is what he had to say. Um, I got uh, I got picked on uh, a qu quite a bit in school. I was a pretty nerdy kid and one of the smaller kids in my grades, so I got picked on more than I liked and I got beat up a few times. So uh, I I walked around. I had a pouch on my belt for my Game Boy. I always had like Final Fantasy or Zelda in my my Game Boy. I was always talking about you know video games and and stuff. But me and my friends would sit at the cafeteria at lunch and we'd all plug in our, uh, our Game Boys together and play multiplayer Zelda games and people would come up and rip the cord out and we'd have to start all over so yeah we were kind of the nerdy guys hung out in, uh, in uh, the reach for the top team the trivia team at, at break and yeah kind of kind of the nerdy kids we called each other the called ourselves the nerd herd so <laughs> No, just kind of the older kids that I think just, I don't know, wanted to be jerks to somebody and I was an easy target. I was really timid, I was really small and, you know, just sometimes I'd get a little bit uh, hyper and make jokes and stuff like that too. I think I called too much attention to myself for how nerdy I was and so then they just, uh, I should have kept my head down and kept quiet but then after, you know, kind of joking around and, and uh, calling attention to myself then I, it was kind of a target, especially with my big Game Boy, and so I got pushed around and stuff. Sometimes I would uh, just take the punch and I'd be like, you know, didn't hurt or whatever, and I'd, I would kind of try to show that I wasn't afraid, but I was afraid to fight back. I didn't know what to do. So I was a, uh, I just didn't know how to fight, but I feel like deep down I knew I was tough, but I didn't know how to fight, and so I was afraid to throw a punch. I didn't know what to do. One day my neighbors told me he was coming into Orangeville. He was uh, learning to box at uh, this gym called Big Time. So I got a, started getting a ride with him. I started coming to the, to the gym for a while. And that was one of the things that I noticed when I started boxing at first I sucked and I was getting beat up all the time. But then after a while I started realizing like I was fighting back and stuff. And I was like, oh, like deep down there's actually something inside of me that knows how to fight and wants to fight back. And, uh, and wants to kind of stand up for myself. And I felt like I was finally worth fighting for in a, a weird sort of way. Yeah, I was coming out of the, the computer room door and the door bumped one of the guys that, that bugged me all the time. There was a group of them standing outside the door and I didn't know they were there. It was a, a solid wooden door, but he pushed me and I said, don't push me. And then he stuck his face out and he said, uh, what are you gonna do about it or something like that I can't even remember in the moment I, I just got so mad and I meant to turn away but I just snapped and for a second I just threw a double jab I got him twice in the nose and all of a sudden his nose started bleeding and and they just left and I think they just went to the washroom to, to wipe his nose up but my buddy grabbed me he's like we better get out of here and we went up to the, the cafeteria and all our other, other friends were there and he's like you'll never believe what happened or he just punched one of the bullies but after that I was walking down the hallway later that day and a group of them were like, hey, tough guy. And I was just like, hey, like, I am a tough guy. Like, pick on me again. And nobody really bugged me after that. And I mean, later as we've become adults and gotten out of high school, a lot of them I've, I met at the bar and they've been like, hey, remember that, whatever. And, you know, bought me a beer, offered to buy me a beer. And we've, we've hung out. So it's all good now. But in high school, it seems like a big deal. And, and that's... So. I would tell bullies not to, if you're having problems or whatever, like don't take it out on other kids. Every kid's going through something. I mean, you're, there's always something that's stressing you out or giving you a hard time. Nobody's life is perfect. So, you know, if you're, if you're bullying kids, like, you know, try to empathize. Think about how, how tough their life could be. You don't know what's going on but when they're at home. And you don't know how that affects people, but also, if you're getting bullied, 
don't be ashamed of who you are. Eventually, everybody grows up, everybody gets over things, and the people who do consistently try to walk all over everybody eventually learn that uh, they can't make it on their own. Yeah, a little bit. If I was to say something to kids getting bullied, I'd just say, just keep being yourself and don't let anybody else scare you or change you or make you feel ashamed of be who you are. It's part of why I wear Like, I fight my sports and I walk out to the bat because I want to say to everyone, like, look, I'm a nerd, I got through it, and I'm not ashamed of it. So, so don't ever let anybody tell you who you are is stupid or, or say what you like is stupid or you're stupid because you like something. Just like it and, and don't be ashamed of it. Some great advice from Ori Cox. Find your passion, live with it, and stay with it. Let's go to Thomas Driver. To the ring, fighting tonight out of the blue corner. Jesus El Rudo Olivares. Jesus Olivares trying to make his way to the ring, coming down off the ramp, heading toward the ring. Another 0-1 record coming in, fighting out of Mexico, and again. It's interesting with uh, Olivares because he made his pro debut in October of 2013, but now we're in February 2016 and he's having a second fight. <laughs> it's a long time between fights. And now let's welcome to the ring, fighting tonight out of the red corner, Ori Rockstar Cox. So Ori Cox now trying to make his way to the ring. You see him on the ramp with Batman standing behind him. Ha. Yeah, very cool. I love it. He's got Batman on his uh, trunks as well. He's fighting out of Orangeville, but this is who they call Brampton Batman. Yep. That's what he's known as. He's shown up in different places around the city of Brampton and I believe the city of Mississauga as well, just randomly. Pretty cool. I like the suit. I'd be wearing it out on the town as oh, well. for sure. <laughs> Brian Mackey. Brian Mackey. He's a great deal. I love Mackey. <laughs> He's been a commentator with us here on Championship Boxing through our fifth anniversary, which we're celebrating tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for four rounds in the middleweight division. Esta pelea cuatro asaltos en peso mediano. Presented by Presentado Por. United Boxing Promotions, along with their great sponsors, Cambridge Hyundai, Dixie Hyundai, Choice Hotels, Phillips Moving, Corona, and the Tilted Kilt Mississauga. The judges are Los Jueces Son, Marvin Sazant, Harry Davis, E. John Wiley. Our referee in charge is Rocky Zolnirchev. 
Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing silver with blue and weighed in at 160 and three quarter pounds. En la esquina azul, vestido de plateado con azul. Su peso es 160 libras y tres cuartos. His professional record, no wins with one defeat. Su record, cero victorias con una derrota. De Puebla, Puebla, México, presentando Jesús El Rudo Olivares. A real showman, I like it. His opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing black trunks and weighed in at 160 and three quarter pounds. En la esquina roja, vestido de negro, su peso es 160 libras y tres cuartos. Undefeated. He has two wins, su record, dos victorias, con cero derrotas. Ladies and gentlemen, from Orangeville, Ontario, Canada, here is Ori Rockstar Cox. Owned by the handle of the Rockstar. Love Ori Cox, he's gonna be, uh, this, this is the fight I've been waiting for tonight. Okay, guys, I went over the instructions in the change rooms. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Hey. Touch gloves. Come on, bang. Yeah. Rockies are here, Chuck, the third man in the corner. Scheduled for four rounds. Both fighters coming out of their corner quickly. Oh, Ori Cox just teeing off. He drops him in the first round. Quick left hand from Ori Cox. And the rock star rocks Jesus Olivares. Took one to the chin, Oliveras. His given first name is Rudo. Cox just bombarding him with punches though. Doing a great job going to the body, staying down low. Hits with an uppercut, then an overhand right. Cox on the offensive once again. Got him pinned against the ropes. Oliveras can't find his way out of harm's way. Cox is just teeing off. And he's got Oliveras with his hands, can't even stand up. Oliveras on the back of his heels right now, and he's about to go down for the second time in the first round. And Cox is just throwing from the floor right up. Oh, man. That a boy. Big body shot from Ori Cox. And a second knockdown here in the first round of Olivares. Took the wind right out of Rudo Olivares. What a body shot that was. Yeah, he hit him with a few of those that round. He's gonna land a few more, looks like. Oh. That's going to end it in the first round. A TKO from Ori Cox in the first round. With 33 seconds left in the first, Brian Mackey hoists his fighter, walks him around the ring. Ori Cox from Orangeville has got the Hershey Center on fire. Good show. No doubt about this one. My goodness, what a flurry of punches right from the get-go oh, from Ori. Gosh. 
Murray Cox coming out and throwing. And it looks like Oliveras really had no chance to stand up to those ones. It's only a four-rounder. He had him hurt in the first round. He went for it. Had him hurt in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. Look at the flurry of punches that Ori got. And he sets every one of them up. Oliveras' hands start to drop, and he knows now I can go from the body to over top or back to the body and drop him to the canvas. Great shot. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, 24 seconds of round number one. El tiempo, dos minutos, 24 segundos del primer asalto. Our referee in charge, Rocky Zonierczyk, stops the contest. Your winner by technical knockout, El Ganador por Knockout Técnico. And still undefeated, Ori Rockstar Kong. Wow, what an effort from Ori Cox. We're gonna wait for Michelle Storino to wait, get over with Ori with the in the ring. Himself. Three fights in this building, three wins. They just keep getting better and better. Now your first knockout, talk a little bit about that. It's amazing, honestly. The, when I was a kid, I would come here and watch shows and I would come in the change room and see my friends warming up for their fights and I never knew how they were able to do it and fight in front of all these people, but it's been the most amazing experience of my life, just fighting in front of everyone. There's the best, the best boxing fans in Ontario all show up to the Hershey Center shows. You guys are the best. You made this the best night in boxing in Ontario. Am I allowed to have this back? All right. Now, you showed a lot of maturity as well because you weren't just head hunting, you landed a really big body shot as well. Just talk about mixing up your punches. I always like to try and mix up my punches. Once you hurt someone to the head, they're gonna start to guard it. Then you start going to the body back and forth. And yeah, once I start, started laying a lot of head shots, then I knew he's gonna be neglecting his body. So I started just mixing it up. One final question. When you see an opponent kind of in that trouble, how do you stay patient enough and not open yourself up to possible counters as well? You've gotta be patient. It's really, really easy to go all out and go too much and just burn yourself out and you gotta be smart, uh, cover yourself up, it's pretty easy to get knocked out when you're too hungry for the knockout, so just gotta be patient and set it up, don't look for the one big punch. Thank you very much, congratulations. Everyone, the rock star, Ori Cox. What a job from Ori Cox, a first round knockout of Jesus Olivares of Mexico, and the rock star lays him out with Batman by his side. in the books. Ori Cox with a big TKO in the first round. We're coming back with more of championship boxing. Don't you dare go away.
uh, parametric that from T more. You know, he won the, the CPC. Well, he's looked a lot more comfortable fighting at one point. He's still, we are in the GT. Okay? He is definitely not the. Well, Corey, we definitely know who won the customized team brought to you by United Boxing. There's going to be a lot of mistakes for both of you. Right now, welcome to Sammy Hart. The only draw Samuel Vargas has had in his career came against the man standing to my left, Tibor Broshin. Tibor, that was five years ago, our first fight here on Championship Boxing. You were a big part of that card, and that was one of the best fights we've seen in the whole five years we've been doing this. That was, that was an exciting night for me, for Sammy, for, for boxing here in Canada. Uh, I, I still get people talking to me about that fight and, and how much they loved it. and. Uh, Great fight, great fight. Glad yeah. to see you've grown out your hair, though. Yeah. I was going to say, your nickname could have been Babyface Assassin. You look so young, too. You know, oh. innocent, an innocent keyboard. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Now, coming up in May, you're getting back in the ring. In May, uh, it's it's very possible that I'll be fighting here at the Hershey Center. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I hope that everything works out and that I'll be inside the ring doing my thing instead of you know, no, no offense, of outside of the ring doing I love, your thing. love hanging out with you guys, but uh, I also would love to be in the ring. I'm hoping that May is going to be the next one for me here at the Hershey Center. It's been, I think, since 2012 since I fought here. Yeah, and I did that fight as well, and that was a tremendous fight. The last fight I did of yours was up at Casino Rama, uh, which is in uh, North Toronto, out in the outskirts of Barrie Region, and that was a that was a full fight with Brandon Cook. I, I loved that fight, too. thought I won that fight. Um, Great fight, another great fight for the fans. I love fighting that Rama. Oh man, I, I, great memories. And the bad boy Brandon Cook has gone on to be the WBA Intercontinental Champion. So that far away yet again for the mighty Tibor Broch. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Michelle, we've seen a lot of boxing here in Mississauga. You gotta talk to me about the atmosphere that we're finding here every time we come back to the Hershey Center, it just seemed to be bigger and better. Exactly, bigger, better, stronger, you kind of want to say to the fan base. They know they're boxing, they know who they're here to cheer for, and they're loud and clear. You heard during the Ari Cox fight, everyone was chanting Ari the whole time. Yeah. Um, and it's not just because of his background and you know being bullied and all that, it's because they know and love their local fighters and it's great to see. Absolutely, and there's a long tradition of local fighters from the Orangeville, Brampton area, which is not far from here at the Hershey Center, so this is typically a home fight for them. Up next is Vargas and Ortega. Stay with us on Championship Boxing.
really static. One, two, three, four. Hershey Center in Mississauga. Hi again, everybody. Doug Anderson, along with Michelle Storino. We're pleased to be joined by WBA Intercontinental Champion, the bad boy, Brandon Cook. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Hershey Center is a great place, and you've had a lot of fights here. Uh, talk to me about the way boxing has really taken off in this neighborhood. Oh, it's crazy how many people come out and support the show every time. Like, every, every one of these guys sell a lot of tickets, and for everybody to come out and keep supporting the show, it's... It's good for boxing, right? Absolutely. And, I, I, you know, I've seen you for a lot of years now, and I don't say way too many years, but I've seen a lot of your fights, and you've just progressed through the ranks and, and really had, uh, I think, the, the, we were just talking about it. The tightest fight we saw was probably at Casino Rem against Tibor Broch. Yeah, that was, uh, that was uh, I guess, over a year or so ago. Yeah. That was, uh, it was different. It was a tough fight. Um, Every you know, fight's against... got its own purpose. Yeah, that's the thing. It? Every fight's different. Uh, you never know what's going to happen until after that first round, right? So Just what's on tap for you next? May 14th, Hershey Center. Um, fortunately, my last fight, I broke my hand, and that's why I'm not able to fight this time. But I'm ready for May 14th. i got 11 weeks to get ready, so, so hopefully um, everything goes well, and I can't wait to get back in there. So how's the recovery process been in trying to heal something that obviously you use on a daily basis, not even you know, in the ring as a fighter, but just on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Well, it's tough because I was back at work the Monday after the fight, and I had to work with my hand broken too. So it was, it was tough. Um, it's the last little while I've been doing a lot of strength and conditioning, getting strong, and uh, working on my jab. Can't do much with my right hand. The last two weeks is really when I started punching again. So hopefully it goes well. And where is the break in the hand? Um, Right here, as you can see, yep. I have a small tear in the ligament, but the doctor thinks it'll be all right. I got to see a surgeon to make sure, but it seems like everything's good. So I'm no surgery as of yet? No, Thank you. hopefully, hopefully, but I'm just happy that it's, I'm punching hard now, so hopefully it stays good. Well, and This is the thing I, I, that we were just talking about earlier. You have a broken, you have a broken hand. Ryan Young broke his hand. Denton Daly broke his hand last year. Joshua Riley. Joshua Riley broke his hand. We need I mean, more guys. That's it. <laughs> it's, the bottom line: we only get one roll of guys, one roll of tape for each hand, one roll of guys, and then for both hands, you only get one roll of tape. So it's like, I don't understand why you can't have as much as you need. Yeah, like you got to save the fighters' hands. Like this is what they use every day, right? Yeah, so absolutely, especially the guys that are early on in their career. Definitely. Yeah, it's. It's tough because when you're hitting a guy and he puts his head down and you hit him on the top of the head, it's going to hurt and you're going to break your hand. So How did you uh, break your hand exactly? It was like 20 seconds before I knocked him out with the left hook to the body. So basically, I, I see it. I seen it like pretty much. I think he dropped his head down and I hit him on the top of the head. And then as soon as I, as soon as I felt it, my hand, I couldn't even throw a punch right after. And I knocked him out. Luckily, I just faked the right and hit him to the left. And... Thank God I didn't get up. So <laughs> do you know at this point who you're fighting on the 14th of May? Um, my coach is, we got like two guys we've been looking at, but whatever they want to do. Will, we're your pretty, will your title be on the line? Yeah, we're defending the title for sure. Awesome. So 12 rounds against, we're going to pick somebody good, and then hopefully the next fight we're just going to call around and see who wants to go for the title. Who wants the tangle? To see what happens. Like I'm, I think I'm almost ready. I'm, another fight maybe, and then just go for it and see what happens. The bad boy Brandon Cook, WBA Intercontinental Champion, back here at the Hershey Center, May 14th, and the title will be on the line. Brandon, thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks a lot. Always Appreciate a pleasure, it. my friend. Thank We're coming back you. with more championship boxing. Stay with us.
Samuel Vargas looking in great shape, Ortega as well. And you gotta wonder, Michelle, as we talk to Brandon Cook going to break, how many fighters have broken their hands in the ring? Well, uh, Vargas is actually in this fight for Ryan Young, who broke his hand as well, and he did so in the exact same way that Brandon Cook did by hitting someone at the top of the head, and it happened to be our main, fight, fight, our main event fight in Tim Cronin. Isn't that strange? You know, you gotta see as Samuel Vargas will come into the ring in just a second. Let's go back to the ring. Here's your ring announcer, Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the ring, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, Edgar Emene Ortega. Ortega making his way to the ring. 16 wins, three losses as he makes his way through the crowd here at the Hershey Center. Ortega, a veteran fighter. And now let's go to the ring. This is fighting tonight out of the red corner. Samuel Varga. Tibor, how difficult is it for Samuel Vargas to get into the ring tonight knowing he was a late replacement for Ryan Young? Oh, I don't think it was too difficult. Uh, Sammy's got a lot of experience and uh, he's got a good team behind him too. He, uh, he knows that he's in this business. He's got to be ready a lot and all the time. I'm sure he's, he, he's got... Well, we talked about it off camera. He's in the same position that you are that you got to take fights on short notice sometimes, oh. and you're always in shape. Absolutely, he 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 probably likes to stay in shape, even just as a in life in general. He stays in shape all the time, knowing that the phone could ring anytime. And uh, this is one of those moments. So I believe that he's very ready for this fight. Sammy Vargas. And again, we talked about it earlier on. We made a little bit light of it, but one of the best fights I have seen is you and Vargas in the ring that first time five years ago. It was a great fight. I enjoyed that night. You, we talked earlier as well. You really had a hate on for each other, didn't you, in the early going? Uh, yeah, you know what? I, I never, I never hated the guy. Actually, uh, growing up in the sport, we actually trained at the same gym in Huff there for a while, and uh, I got nothing against Sammy. But the no, now you don't. But no, but gone, that first fight, of... yeah, sure. The first fight, it was, uh, you know, who's gonna win? We obviously felt superior than the other and uh, wanted to win that fight. Oh yeah, it was a high competition that night. And it's a high compliment to say that Vargas has had one draw in his career, and it was against you. Yeah, I guess so. He's he's doing great in his career right now. So. Uh, Go back to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our co-main event. It is scheduled for eight rounds in the super welterweight division. Esta pelea ocho asaltos en peso super welter. Presented by Presentado Por United Boxing Promotions, along with their sponsors, Cambridge Hyundai, Dixie Hyundai, Choice Hotels, Phillips Moving, Corona, and the Tilted Kilt, Mississauga. The judges are Los Jueces Son, Raymond Rudder, Jeremy Hayes, and Harry Davis. Our referee in charge, the third man in the ring, will be Donovan Boucher. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, he's wearing white trunks and weighing in at 154 pounds. En la esquina azul, vestido de blanco, su peso es 154 libras. His professional record consists of 16 wins, three defeats, with 10 of his 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Su record profesional, 16 victorias, tres derrotas con 10 victorias por la vía del knockout. 
de Torreón, Coahuila, México, presentando Edgar El Nene Ortega. His opponent across the ring in his co-main event, fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing black with red and weighing in at 153 pounds. En la esquina roja, vestido de negro con rojo. Su peso es 153 libras. His professional record consists of 23 wins, just two defeats, one draw, with 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Su record, 23 victorias, dos derrotas, un empate, con 13 victorias por la vía del knockout. A native of Bogota, Colombia, he now makes his home in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the current NABA welterweight champion, Samuel Vargas. Vargas looks in great shape. I gave the pre-fight instruction in the changing room. All, all I want from you guys is to listen to my comment at all time. Most importantly, protect yourself at all times. Keep them above the waist. It, it's good right here. Huge good luck to both of you. That's, close. That's an intense stare down right there, fellas. Ortega is the bigger guy. Donovan Boucher, the third man in the ring. Man, Canadian boxing fans know very well, had a lot of success in the ring as a fighter, now as a referee. Ortega staying to the outside. Throws that big uppercut. Quick snapping left from Ortega. Donovan Boucher steps in to separate the fighters. Ortega showing some very good hand speed. For a big guy. Vargas going to the body early on. Slips that quick left jab. Over the top comes Ortega, connecting on that one. someone came to you, Tibor, and said, be specific, what is Vargas's style? Hey, you know, uh, I think his style has changed over his, his career. He's like, like I said earlier tonight, he's kind of coming into himself. I think he's a little bit more well-rounded well uh, than he was when he first started. I believe he does everything uh, pretty good. I think he, he's good at and comfortable about being in the pocket and going to war, and uh, and he can box too. His defense is a lot better than it was in the early going in his career. Yes. He used to be happy to take two and give one. Yes, he didn't mind. He definitely know he could take a shot. The Cuba main event of the night. This is round number one. Ortega with 16 wins in his career, 10 of them coming by a yeah, KO. letting them throw against the ropes as they were slightly tied up. Just under 20 seconds left here in the first round. Vargas connects with the right, goes with the combination. Final 10 seconds. Will he finish with a flurry? Ortega fights his way out of the corner, and that should do it for round number one. Good round. One thing that you definitely notice with Vargas is that he's mixing up the speed and weight of his punches. So there were some 
I guess you could call them like pitter pats, really fast ones. And then near the end of that round there, he just laid some really hard punches on Ortega. Yeah. So and and that really puts you off balance when you're trying to defend Tibor. Yeah, it, you know, it, for Sammy, it's a good sign of just being focused and in tune with your body, knowing that you can throw the hard shot there and the little tiny shot there. It's difficult. A lot of guys have problems. As soon as they start throwing the big shot, they continue to throw the big shot until it's done. One of the big things as well that I noticed in that first round from Vargas is not only are his punches, like you said, Michelle, coming from different speeds and different intensity, but they're also coming from different angles. He, he's certainly cutting down the angles and he's changing the angles of where his punches are coming from. Putting a lot of pressure on his opponent there that first round. Vargas getting more comfortable. Moving into the second round. You know, and as we mentioned, that those varying speeds and powers, Ortega is actually just throwing hard yeah. all the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if he does get gas later on in this fight. Took that straight right hand from Vargas. Ortega goes to the body, then over top. Vargas has been able to slip most of those overhand rights. There's a straight left from Vargas. Goes to the body. Ortega slips out of the way. Right hook coming from Ortega. Vargas backs his man into the corner. Steps in and Ortega came forward as well. Good combination from Ortega trying to fight his way out of the corner, but Vargas hits him with a right hook right to the liver section they calling it a little bit of a low blow I'm not sure if that was Ortega he's game though stunned as he hits him with a left as well. Final 10 seconds, 30 seconds of the second round. Oh, Ortega, huge uppercut. Vargas keeps coming forward. Ortega keeps going over the top. Good shots from Ortega at the end there. You know, it's tough, it's tough to know what a judge sees and uses as points. So for instance, you know, how much does it really say, yes, Vargas took some big shots at the end of that round, but he kept coming forward as well. Yeah, yeah. Tough, tough to score. I mean, a lot of people see it different ways. Right. Now, this is the first time as well that Ortega's fighting outside of Mexico and an opponent other than a Mexican opponent as well. Well, he certainly doesn't look like he's out of his element. No, he's throwing, he's throwing his punches with uh, bad intentions, but also with confidence. Huge combination from Ortega. Doubling up on the jab. 
Vargas. Tries to slip that one. Nice job to get the right hand up and block that Ortega left hook. Donovan Boucher seems to be allowing these guys a little more space, time and space, uh, before he steps in. They're trying to let them put something together. Yeah, it's, it's been a bit of an awkward fight. Yeah. It's been a bit of an awkward fight so far. Uh... Stop, 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 stop. Give it back. Both guys getting visibly frustrated now as well with the stoppages. Vargas saying, hey, what do you want me to do? Every time I go near him, he just jumps in and clutches and grabs me. Pulls me by the back of the head. We got a left shoe sole here on Ortega there falling off. It's kind of bothering him, I think. <laughs> That's not good. That's going to be sticking in his mind as well. Ortega backing up. Takes the right hand. The right hand from Sammy. Pretty sure that's a first time in pro boxing. Nope. Pull out the tape. Boy, time ticks down as the conversation goes on in the ring. You're right, Tibor. This is a strange fight so far. A bit awkward. Guys trying. To, both guys trying to find their rhythm, find their distance. Ortega is, I think, ooh, a good right hand from Sammy. Got to wonder if that left sole is starting to uh, affect the rhythm of Ortega, but he connected with a big one right there on Vargas. Ten seconds left in the third round. There's a low blow, but Vargas shakes it off. I thought I looked a bit low, too. Yeah. I don't know what to make of that round, really, fellas. That was a tough one. We're going to... See if we can get a listen to what's going on in the corner for Daniel Burgess. There's that left sole of Ortega being taped up. That's got to be nerve-wracking to follow that through the rest of this fight after only two rounds. Well, his payday is definitely going to go towards new boots. <laughs> Take it, he's got pretty good hand speed. Sure does. And Kind of, kind of beating Sammy to the punch right now. Out, you know, that's what I'm afraid for Sammy. Is he gets outworked. Sammy's putting a lot of pressure on him. But Ortega seems to be uh, landing some awkward shots on him. It's awkward shots, but it's funny because every time Berger gets close, oh, there's a big left hook. Berga, big right hand up. for Ortega. Absolutely, he's throwing from the heels, even though they're taped up. You're seeing two things. We mentioned the hand speed of Ortega. And he's throwing the hooks with a really good snap, and they're short, quick hooks, yeah. which are catching uh, Vargas off guard. But he's and throwing them with authority and yes. following yeah. them up. Yes, yes. 
And then, of course, we see Vargas getting emotional, too. Bring it on. You see when they when they break up from being connected, you know, they split apart. I find Ortega's kind of beating him. He's beating him to the shot, you know? Early on in this fight, we're just in the third round. 130 left. Or fourth round, sorry. Info on the screen, it is the third round with 118 left. to the body, and Ortega says, yeah, well, let's bring it on. Again. Vargas finally snapping off a few jabs that connect. Ortega back up. Ortega, though, getting the big heavy punches in. Ooh. That's a tight punch to be throwing. The mouthpiece of Ortega has come out. I was just about to say that this round seemed to be opening up a bit more, a lot less clutching and grabbing, but uh, with the exception of that part right there. It's definitely... It's, it's almost like he spit the mouthpiece out rather than it being knocked out. Out of frustration, maybe, yep. as well. There was a bit of a headbutt. Does it for this round. Huh. I see a lot of uh, trash talk happening as well, and it's kind of funny. So we've got Ortega, who's of uh, Mexican descent, and then Vargas, of course, was born in Colombia. So, you know, there's, they are speaking Spanish to yeah, each other. Talking. Yeah, they're definitely talking to each other in there. Both of them don't mind taking a few shots and returning. The mouse over the right eye of Edgar Ortega. But you can see the frustration on Vargas's face telling his corner, I don't know where to go. I've tried everything to stay away and land my punches. Ortega throws that right hand with, as you called it, Tibor, bad intentions. Yeah. Vargas on the prowl this time. Goes to the body with a couple of punches. And off the break, Ortega connects with a left hook. Vargas comes in, Ortega over top with the right. So you're right, Tibor, every time they break, Ortega's getting that last punch in. Kind of beat the shot. Whoa. Dropping Vargas to the canvas. Oh, my. It wasn't a knockdown that no. he actually took his arm and threw yeah, it to it the can. Bit of a bit of a toss down. <laughs> definitely some, some friction in there. Today. Both guys have been warned now as well for different things, but both having warnings. Good stab to the body by Sammy. Vargas with a big right hand, connecting with a left hook. Got 
got to keep those flurries up. That's what he needs to do. Ortega trying to fight his way out of the corner, but Vargas isn't letting him. He's matching him punch for punch. here in the fifth round. Vargas got caught, but gets his own right hand in. The crowd starting to step behind Samuel Vargas. Wild right from Ortega. He connects with that straight left. Vargas missed with the wild left hook. There's a good right that hits from Vargas. Oh, he missed with that sweeping right hook. He's gone to the body, then a quick uppercut. Ortega with the hands starting to lower a little bit. Nice uppercut coming from Vargas. Ortega showing that he can take a punch. Yeah. That does it for the fifth round, and Samuel Vargas came on big in that one. This is becoming a little bit of an ego match. Oh, yeah. And you, you can know? see the bantering in Spanish oh. going back and forth between these guys. Absolutely. And both guys showing that they have the chin and they're willing to stand toe to toe. And you heard it from the crowd. They're loving every second of it. Oh, yeah. But as much as you might like it as a fighter, how dangerous is that? It's so dangerous to just, you know, be totally entrenched in that type of a fight. Well, you know, certain fighters like that kind of style too. Certain fighters feel more comfortable there than, than standing on the outside boxing. I mean, it. Uh, I can say I can say from from my own experience that I, there are there's days where I feel more comfortable boxing inside. Some days you feel more comfortable boxing outside. You can see the confidence of Vargas starting to pick up now. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, you know, it looks like he's having some fun in there, and, and, that, and that's important. Going after him. There you go. Oh, oh, he picked him up and dropped him. Oh, my. That was a body slam of body slam. This has turned into WWE stuff. Samuel Vargas is saying to Donovan Boucher, the referee, what do I got to do here? In the hockey world, they call that the can opener. Great, 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 step back. Don't load up. Step back, step back, step back. Don't load up. Vargas backing Ortega up. Ortega missed, and Vargas connects with the right hand. A sharp little straight right from Samuel Vargas. Tibor, you're right, though, for Edgar Ortega. Every punch seems to come with fury. Yes. Um, you know, what, what I'm starting to see now is I think Sammy's kind of getting, I think Ortega is kind of getting a little bit more frustrated than Vargas now. I think Vargas is having more fun in there, and he's starting to put them together now. Uh, I see him dominating. Stop, stop, stop. Good. Good. Wild punches from Ortega, just missing their mark. There's a good straight left from Vargas. Vargas hits with the straight left and then comes over with the right. Ortega throwing the left. Misses on the uppercut. Glancing blow off the shoulder. Got him after the bell as well to the body. And boy, Samuel Vargas does not look happy with this. That was a bit late after the bell.
Edgar Ortega in his corner. We'll see if we can get a chance to hear what they're seeing. Him. Well, the advice coming out of Vargas' corner is throw the jab and follow it up with an overhand right. And there it was. Ortega throwing that lead uppercut, right uppercut when the Sammy comes in. Uh, what's, what I'd love to see Sammy do is throw some feints, uh, look, try to get him to throw that right uppercut and sweep him with the hook. Yeah, because it looks like Ortega relies on that uppercut a lot. I notice he's throwing it quite often as, as uh, Sammy comes in. there than actual fighting. Vargas comes back, connects with a straight left. Oh, he took that one though from Ortega. Stays with it. Ortega, more of the uh, counter puncher of the two as it looks like Vargas is trying to carry the pace here. Round number seven looks with a 110 left here. Vargas stunned a little bit with that quick left from Ortega. Vargas connects with the right and goes to the left on the body. Ortega trying to fight out of the corner, but Vargas had him pinned for a couple of seconds with some combinations. I gotta wonder if Sammy doubles up on that jab, would he catch it more often? Yeah, he, he, they're both kind of smothering each other as they come in. That's why a lot of the shots are looking awkward and uh, coming from weird angles. Vargas is literally walking him down from one corner to another, <laughs> yep. to another, to another. And I see him doing better things than, like, He's kind of keeping his balance better, stepping around him as he's close to him. Ortega with his hands down by his side in the corner, then turns Varga around. Varga hits to the body. And again, after the, after the bell goes, Ortega wow. with the second time in this seven round so far has hit Samuel Vargas with a shot way after the bell. You gotta believe something's gotta be said. No. Both of them just kind of goading each other into frustration and, you know, taking them off their game, essentially. That's what they're trying to do at this point. Lots of mind games being played. Now, this is the eighth and final round coming up, and I have Samuel Vargas well ahead in this fight. I think it's gonna have to be an Ortega knockout to put the difference in. Am I wrong there? I think Ortega's gonna have to do something good in uh, this fight to, to steal the fight. Uh, I got Sammy also up. Marcus is uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow, lots of attitude in the ring. Tough fight to score, you know. Uh, 
not it's easy a, to see all the shots. And it's a 10 point hit. must system, so you got to give somebody 10 points in every round. Not easy. Know, either being tied up or thrown down just because they want to you know disengage just so they can get back at it right away right and hope that the other fighter gets a point taken away as well because they've both been warned at this point you know what in an eighth round fight eighth round of an eight round fight I have high high doubt that Donovan Boucher would be tempted to take a point away from someone Vargas he's got his man in the corner Vargas just piling up the points, connecting with a couple of straight lefts, then going back to the body. Ooh, that was a bit of a rabid punch coming from Ortega. He's throwing with forearms, he's not throwing with gloves. Oh, he tries to kick him! My goodness, that's got to be a point taken away. He tried to kick him. I have yet to see that. Wow. I... Ortega's just fighting mean now. This is a street brawl. This has turned into a street yeah. fight. Look at Vargas. He's got a little bit of a smirk on his face. He's got Ortega where he wants him. All he's got to do is stay upward for the next 45 seconds. Vargas. Give him a little bit of noogies. Takes one back. Oh, man. That's what it was. <laughs> you're right. you got to call it as you see it. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It's, uh, Donovan trying to keep control in the ring there. He's, he's got a hard night here. Good punch from Farga. Not sure. Oh, when they say come on like that, the big smile, yeah. usually that's when you're hurt. Not sure what he's trying to do there. Vargas connects to the chin. Ortega unable to fight out of the corner. His hands are down low. He's trying for that big knockout punch, trying to pull Vargas in, but it's just not happening. Vargas is getting too quick to him. There's two punches after the whistle, after the bell. Oh. My goodness. When does that become a point off? When? Good sportsmanship afterwards, but... <laughs> oh, interesting fight, man. So how do you term that one? Oh, you man. say interesting that's, fight, that's, but if you got somebody, that's hey, an interesting fight. These I mean, are the ones that where the judges make their money. These are where they get paid the big bucks, right? Yeah, you know, both guys had uh, some trouble landing clean, clean shots, but uh, I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was because Ortega was just throwing them with more intent. While I was looking at his shots more, I, I, I can't say. I, I don't know. Yeah, this is just, this is this is where it got a little surreal. I don't want to be that guy that calls it a draw, you know? No, that's not a draw this one. I got Vargas, actually I got Vargas three points ahead. Yeah? Yeah. That's just me, and again, I was wrong in, in one of our fights here tonight. Completely wrong. There's the kick. Vargas oh, accentuates the positive and goes down in a heap. But, yeah, you know, I, it, there's the noogies. <laughs> Both guys kind of embellishing things a little Absolutely. bit, you know, and, and you don't want to see that. You don't want to see that. That's the next time we're Samuel Vargas. You know what? Both you smiles got on their faces is uh, a good thing, though, to see the fight. Absolutely, and you got to You got to love the way Sammy goes into the ring with a smile on his face and leaves with a smile oh, yeah, on his face. He's fearless. He's a warrior. Waiting for the final count to be presented to Thomas Driver in the middle of the ring.
Scott Ortega came over to the Vargas corner. A shot of Dylan Carmen leaning over the uh, big country, leaning over the ropes in Vargas's corner. Look, this is where he kicked me. How can you not take a point away for that? My goodness. <laughs> so we finally got everything tallied up as Thomas Driver looks ready to go at in the center of the ring. After eight rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Raymond Rudder scores it 78 to 73. El West Raymond Rudder on all those 78 to 73. Judge Jeremy Hayes scores it 77 to 74. El West Jeremy Hayes on all 77 to 74. And Judge Harry Davis scores it. 77 to 74. E.L. West, Harry Davis, anotó 77 a 74. For your winner by unanimous decision, para el ganador por decisión unánime, Samuel Vargas. Samuel Vargas with a five point win, 78 73 over Edgar Ortega. Ortega takes his fourth loss of his career while the 24th win for Samuel Vargas. Good and with your winner, Samuel Vargas, definitely no love loss in that fight. Yeah, no, well, you know, I always uh, come to put a, a show here at the Heritage Center. These fans here watch me box since, since I was uh, 18, 19 years old. Uh, you know, and I'm still here, I'm still winning, so thank you everyone for coming and for the support. Have you ever been in such an emotional fight before? Uh, yeah, many times, many times. <laughs> it's uh, part of the job, yeah. part of the job description. Well, nothing, I guess, to that extent. I mean, you guys were just talking back and forth, kind of voting each other on, and you could see the frustration on both your faces with the tie-ups, the takedowns, and everything else. Well, th there's a first time for everything. I mean, I, I never kicked it. I've never been kicked in before in a boxing ring, but hey, uh, you know, it was my day, but, uh, he, uh, he was a very strong guy, so every time he, he punched in, he, he, uh, he put his weight on me, a lot of grabbing. Uh, you know, the referee tried to do his best job, uh, but you know, it, it was uh, uh, you know, a lot of wrestling, a lot of holding, so I tried to do the best I could on my end. Well, you had everyone here standing up for the last two rounds. Congratulations on your 24th win. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you to uh, all my sponsors, for every Young Angley, Baxter, uh, Don McDonald, Tyler Buxton for the promotion, Rogers TV. Everybody here, my family, and you know, mostly the, the, the man above makes it all happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Samuel Vargas, his 24th win. Unanimous decision for Samuel Vargas, 78-73 over Edgar Ortega. Ortega takes his fourth loss of his career, the 24th win for Samuel Vargas, and I got him dominating this fight after round number three, when I believe in my scorecard, he won five rounds in a row. I thought he, I thought he won the fight. You know, he was a little bit more patient and uh, started to put him together better at the end of the, at the, the last two rounds there. Absolutely. And you got to believe Samuel Vargas is happy with that and some strange moments in that fight, to be sure. We're coming back with more on Championship Boxing. Our main event is up next.
My name is Tim Cronin. I've been boxing for 15 years. My professional record is seven and one right now. My grandfather was always a boxer. He was always throwing punches at me when I was a little kid. He was a boxer back in Hall. Um, so yeah, he was always jabbing at me, getting in at me. Like I always had that fighter spirit in me as well as a kid. So that's pretty much what set the seed was was my grandfather. So and that was it. it just and it's just history from there. The typical day is um, you wake up early. I'm in the gym about five o'clock in the morning for strength training. And then I'm off to work after for six, seven. And then I'm back in the gym again for four o'clock. And I'm not out of here until seven, 7.30. It's, uh, days are pretty filled. So that just all came into play once I turned pro, so. Everything just was more excessive now. I've, I, I've done it for so long, so it's just, you know, this is, it was always an everyday thing for me, so. It was, you know, I, I grew up like that, so like, um, I come from, I come from a place where it's, you, you put in that heavy grind. So when I landed here in Cabbage Town, I had, I had Peter Wiley and, and Johnny Calvin for my trainers. Thank the whole world to those guys because they turned me into the fighter I am right now. They got me where I am right now. If it wasn't for them, their their knowledge, their know-how, who knows. Um, and everybody here at the Cabbage Town too is, is had everything, a little part of everything too, so. But uh, right now Johnny, Johnny Calvin's training me and there's just nothing but good things in sights, so. There's there's definitely a title fight here in, the, in sights here soon. Hopefully we get that Canadian title and head on up from on there. Hopefully Intercontinental Championship. We'll see, we'll see what, what happens after that. Whoever's in the, whoever's in my way category, whoever's in my way, I wanna fight them, so that's about it. Ladies and gentlemen, right now at this time, I ask that you all please rise as we welcome Juno Award winner and 2016 nominee, R&B recording artist, he's Mississauga's own, let's welcome Drew Green. Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all our sons come in. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, our true nor strong and free. From far and wide, oh Canada, we stand on God for thee. God keep on land, glorious and free. Oh Canada, we stand on God. Drew Green. Okay, Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our featured bout. It is scheduled for eight rounds in the light heavyweight division. 
Esta pelea, ocho asaltos en peso semi completo. Presented by, presentado por United Boxing Promotions, along with their great sponsors, Cambridge Hyundai, Dixie Hyundai, Choice Hotels, Phillips Moving, Corona, and the Tilted Kilt Mississauga. It is sanctioned by the Ontario Athletics Commission, acting commissioner tonight, John Biggerstaff. The judges are Los Jueces Son, Raymond Rutter, Alan Davis, E. Harry Davis. Our referee in charge is Dave Dunbar. Damas y caballeros, este es el combate estelar de esta noche. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the Hershey Center here in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, this is our main event of the evening. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing white with black and weighed in at 174 and a quarter pounds. En la esquina azul, vestido de blanco con negro. Su peso es 174 libras y un cuarto. His professional record consists of nine wins, three defeats, with three of his nine wins coming by way of knockout. Su record, nueve victorias, tres derrotas con tres victorias por la vía del knockout. De Zamora, Michoacán, México, presentando Guillermo, el vampiro, Herrera Campos. His opponent across the ring in this main event. He is fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing green with white and weighed in at 174 pounds. En la esquina roja, vestido de verde con blanco, su peso es 174 libras. His professional record consists of seven wins, just one defeat, two wins come by way of knockout. Su record profesional, siete victorias, una derrota con dos victorias por la vía del knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, here is Irish Tim Gentlemen, amigos, we went through the rules in the dressing room. Belt line here, above that is a good blow. Belt line is here, above that is a good blow. I want you to protect yourselves at all times, obey my commands at all times. Touch clothes now, gentlemen. Shake hands. Good luck to you both. So here we go, round number one of our main event. Compost against Cronin. Cronin in the Irish flag colors of green, white, and orange. And of course, Campos wearing the white trunks dressed in black. Yes. The headbutt looks like a cut on Cronin's forehead. Yep, sure is, and it's going to flow down into his eye as it's high on the forehead. Man, that's early on for something like that to happen. Cronin taking the beating in his own corner. Trying to find his way out of there. Campos is the bigger guy. And he's putting the punches and, together. And he's strong. He's, he knows how to throw them, so uh, Tim, needs to be, Tim needs to be careful. And this is probably the first time we've seen someone just as tall and as long and as, you know, uh, powerful as Tim up against him. He's always the taller guy in the fight. Yes, very similar body, body styles or, you know, height and weight kind of thing, the way they're built. But it just looks like Campos knocks Cronin down. Good right hand. We're gonna take a look at Cronin's forehead right now. 118 left here in the first round, and Cronin has blood all over the place. The cut is in, it's not a deep, not a big gash, but it's in a bad spot. It's not that bad. I think they, I think they'll let it go on. 
Cronin's it's challenge is, though, that the blood flows man. right into that left eye. Yeah. Oh, they might be stopping this one. Are you kidding me? And it came via a headbutt. It did. It was not a punch. They're going to try to give the corner a chance to clean up the cut and see if they can stop the blood from flowing. But I think that is it. I think they are going to stop this fight. Yeah, I know, I know. So confirmation call. that the fight is over. That's terrible. After just a half of a round, and that is very unfortunate. Tim Cronin was visibly upset. This is prof you know, I gotta say it, I gotta say it. This is professional boxing. Cuts happen. Uh, his eyes weren't in any damage. You know, I, I believe that fight should have went on. And that coming from a guy who's, I mean. I mean, that's, I don't know what to say. And it literally came within the first 30 seconds of the fight, just yep. an accidental headbutt and, you know, the first time he's been in uh, the main event. They look like they've cleaned it up fairly well, but this one is done. There is the headbutt right there coming up, and that's when Cronin backs away and says, I think I just got cut. Yeah, this is the knockdown. There's the right hand, catching him right in that temple area, and that's an easy way to drop your opponent. Where was that? You, it was a tough angle. We, hard we to did try yeah. to show it. He, he came, came up, up with his head. Yeah. A really disappointing way to end a very good night of fights. Absolutely. We've seen some tremendous fights here tonight put on by United Promotions. And I'll tell you something, this is an unfortunate way to end it in the co-main event after we saw Samuel Vargas and Edgar Ortega go with a full eight rounds in a tremendous fight. This one stopped after just a half a round. Let's go to the ring. Here's Thomas Driver. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. because the not only the doctor but the referee stepped in and said this was not done by a punch this was done by a headbutt and so we're going to make it a technical draw not and not a win for campos but a technical draw so something maybe to be gleaned positive for uh, cronin that is not a loss going on his record but still at the same token uh, you know he was visibly upset, Michelle. Oh, absolutely. How can you be happy after any of this? I mean, that wasn't the start that he wanted, period. Right? Nope. You got the headbutt in there. You got the knockdown in the first round. And it's your first time being the main event of a fight. Yeah. And, Tibor, you're still of the opinion. And, I, and, by the way, I agree with you 100%. This is professional boxing. Yeah, a cut like that, although it was a deep cut, uh, was not something that was impairing him from fighting. No, no, I, I, I've got to be honest. You, you know, how uh, would you react when you're if you were in the ring and something like that was going? I, because you've been I mean, cut over I the would, eye a I couple guess, of times. I guess I would have uh, acted similar to Conan. I know he was upset. He wants to fight. He doesn't. It wasn't his call to uh, quit the, uh, not, or stop the bout. But uh, you know, he has no choice when the ref makes Remember that call. Yeah, you should say it was the right side position that made the call. Oh, sorry, I'm point. sorry. You're yeah. right. right. Wow. And so what do you say now? I think the irony of it is that initially it wasn't going to be looked at. Yeah. 
Tim Cronin was about to talk to the crowd, and uh, I think he had a lot to say. And uh, we're going to see if we can get Michelle Storino into the ring and maybe get a quick. Uh, we're going to get an interview with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Come over here. So let's hear what Tim Cronin has to say about the turn of events here tonight. With Tim the Irish Cronin, an unfortunate way to end the night. Just tell us a little bit uh, how it all happened and uh, obviously what you're going through, what you're feeling right now. Hey everybody, I'm sorry it was a short fight. I got, I got, I took the head in the first little bit of the first round. Not in my hands, I couldn't do anything about it. I would love to uh, give you full, full eight rounds of this. Sorry. And what did the physician say to you exactly? Because it's not in your eye, it's just the blood's coming down. I said it's too deep. I said it's too deep, you won't let the fight go on. Well, we appreciate obviously all the hard work you put into tonight's fight and we look forward to seeing you in the future. We know bigger and better things to come from Tim Cronin. Absolutely, can't wait to get back here. Sorry guys, I love you all. That's Tim the Irish Cronin. I'm sure we'll see him again in the very near future. Let's take a look at earlier in the night. That was this Alex was Banks show. were in the charcoal trunks, taking out Jeff Tabrizi. A very tight, unanimous decision. 38-37, I had that one. And Ebanks, in his professional debut, comes through with a big win. Good win for him. Good win for me. Put the put the basics together. It's one, two, straight punches down the pipe, and his, his guy went down. Then it was on to Oscar Barajas and Mohamed Abedin, and this one could have gone either way. Uh, the judges saw it a little differently than we did on yeah. our, our posting at ringside, but I'll tell you something, it was still an exciting fight to watch. That, that's true. Michelle, what do you think of the way Mo performed in this one? Just a little bit earlier on, this was the one fight that both fighters just left everything out there in the ring. Yeah. They both can't have reservations or anything like that, any regrets about how they fought, both valiantly putting their heart out on the line, and uh, it was very entertaining to watch. Then the rock star rocked Jesus Oliveira says, Ori Cox wins by TKO, just 33 seconds left in the first round. He came out with flurries, Tibor, that just had nothing to match from Oliveira. Beautiful body shots, upstairs, downstairs, around the side, up the middle, uh, you name it, uh, Ori did it tonight. You know what? We can almost show the whole fight because <laughs> he only fought for a round there for less than a round before it was stopped. Then it became to Edgar Ortega of Mexico and Toronto Samuel Vargas. And this was a strange affair to begin with, Michelle. We can call this the bad blood match of the night because it was just back and forth uh, between, I guess you could say, the goading each other into uh, maybe some bad or frustrating shots. There's that kick. Exactly, the kick heard round Mississauga, we'll say or around boxing. Uh, Not to mention the body slams that Ortega threw. And I was, you know, Tibor, I sat back and I watched this and I'm kind of going, what the heck? This is a three ring circus at some points. And then the technical fighting in the corners came out and it was awesome to watch at certain points. It's too bad because it takes it away from the fight. You know, you're paying attention to all the nasty stuff and not the actual, the actual fight, the punches and throwing. Then we had Tim Cronin getting knocked down in the first yeah. round, but that was... Uh, he was in trouble. Yep, the whole fight was called uh, technical draw. So, some final thoughts on the night and the evening of fights, Michelle. I think we're gonna be seeing some really good things from a lot of uh, the local talent in and around Ontario in the very near future. Uh, Alex Ebanks looked very good. Obviously, we talked about uh, Ori Cox and, you know, Mo Abedin, all those guys, they performed valiantly well. They, they left it all on the line. And I mean, we're, we're seeing them improve as you know we have more and more of these cards here with United Promotions. You know, Tibor, when you talk about seeing the fighters, the young fighters that came out here tonight, then you look at a veteran fighter like Samuel Vargas and the show that he put on. Uh, does it, it make you look forward to May 14th a little bit more? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, the, I was impressed with a lot of things in these fights, but there was a lot of things I wasn't impressed with either. So, uh, you know, I'm still in the game. I'm still in good shape, and I know I mentioned about coming back in May. I hope it happens because uh, 
I still got some things to show. Yeah, well, we all hope it happens for Mighty Tibor Broch and for my great partner of a long time, Michelle Storino. I'm Doug Anderson. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Championship Boxing.